you're looking at a representation of GPS satellites circling our globe. In this video, we're going to take a little bit of a look at how the GPS system works and some of the applications of the GPS network. And when I first talked about GPS in a previous video, I think I said that the satellites were at 12,000 feet, which is absolutely incorrect. They're at 12,000 miles or 12,000 miles up in the sky. There's 24 of them. Actually, there's 27, I think, three for redundancy. And uh, I read something somewhere that 30 would be an even better number. But uh, this is how GPS works. So uh, you have a picture here of a farmer, and then you have some satellites up in the sky. And, uh, and here's a little definition of what the GPS thing is. It's the constellation of 24 or more satellites flying 20,350 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. Each one circles the planet twice a day, one of six orbits to provide continuous worldwide coverage. So 20,350 kilometers. If we go to Google and we search for 20,350 kilometers in miles, that's uh, 12,645 miles. So that's how high, how high those are. And uh, how, how, does this, uh, how does this all tell us our location on the planet? Well, we have these little steps here that uh, uh, this, this diagram here is from gps.gov. And we have these little steps about how it works. GPS satellites broadcast the radio signals providing their locations, status, and precise time from on onboard atomic clocks. So these GPS satellites are always broadcasting their location, their, uh, their status, and the precise time, right, when they send the signal, it carries with it the precise time uh, from on board atomic clock. So these are all, all these satellites have a clock, which is, uh, you know, extremely accurate, and they're all synced together. The clocks are all synced together. So the GPS radio signal then travels through space at the speed of light more than 299,792 kilometers a second. And a GPS device, like inside a tractor or a car or inside your cell phone, receives the radio signals, noting their exact time of arrival, and it uses this to calculate its distance from each satellite in view. So if it knows the time that it left, it knows the speed at which it traveled, and it knows the time it arrived, it can then calculate how far it is from each, each satellite. So it calculates its distance from, uh, I think it needs four satellites, though I've always read four before, I start, or three before. Uh, I've started uh, hearing today, as I've looked into this and just refreshed my memory, it needs four satellites to calculate a location. Once a GPS device knows its distance from at least four satellites, it can use geometry to determine its location on Earth in three dimensions. Right, so then it, you know when it when it knows how far it is from four satellites, it could then use uh, geometry to calculate exactly where its location is. So basically, if you remember geometry, these are big sort of triangles, and uh, we're creating triangles here. Which, uh, if we know the the distance from here, we know the distance here, we know the distance here, we could find find points. So we triangulate, we find we triangulate to figure out you know where someone's location is. And uh, just looking to see what else it says on this. The Air Force launches new satellites to replace aging ones when needed. The new satellites offer upgraded accuracy and reliability. And then this, uh, this tells a little bit about how it calculates the distance. Calculates distance from the satellite GPS devices. Apply this formula to the satellite signal. Distance equals rate times time. Where rate and time is how long the signal traveled through space. So how long did it take, right? The rate at which it traveled. How long did it take to get from here to there? The signal's, signal's travel time is the difference between the time broadcast when it left here, what time did it leave the satellite, and the time the signal re was uh, received, right? What time did it arrive? So that'll tell us how long it traveled. If we know the speed at which it's traveling, we can figure out the distance. And uh, yeah, so it's a pretty cool diagram, I think, about how GPS works. And uh, I like this little, uh, whatever, animation that shows the different satellites sort of a uh, traveling around the planet and you can see these green lines here creating a triangulation for some point on the planet like if there's somebody standing there with their cell phone right and as the planet rotates these satellites are rotating the satellites that are being used to calculate right the location are is always shifting so as new satellites come overhead the gps device picks up the new satellites 
And uh, the green lines show the satellites being used to calculate, you know, the location of that one point on this turning world uh, as the world continues to turn. And my guitar gently weeps. If you haven't heard that song, uh, that song, how's it go? Um, I look at the floor and I know it needs sweeping. Still, my guitar gently weeps. <laughs> I look at the world and it is turning, something like that. Cool old Beatles song. If you go to gps.gov, you can learn more about GPS and how it works. There are uh, applications you could use for GPS devices, right? All this, some of the different applications are listed there. And if you go to Wikipedia, it talks a little bit more about GPS. And, uh, and then again, you could come down here and see some of the applications for which G GPS is used. Um, so anytime you need to calculate location of anything, that's the job for GPS. So obviously it's a no-brainer for uh, navigation, whether it's you know a ship or an airplane or a cruise missile or a tank or a car, right? We use GPS when using our little like uh, give me the directions to a location on our cell phone. Um, you know, so obviously it's a no-brainer for those types of applications. But there's other interesting applications. Um, I just thought it might be interesting to point a couple things out from this opening paragraph. A space-based satellite navigation system provides location and time information in all weather conditions anywhere on or near Earth where there is an unobstructed line of sight to a view to four or more GPS satellites. The system, see there we have four or more again. The system provides critical capabilities to military, civil, civil and commercial uses around the world. It's maintained by the United States government and it's freely accessible to anyone with a GPS receiver. Uh, and then when it was developed, and then, you know, when it was opened, and uh, it came online in 19, uh, was originally developed in 1973, but it became fully operational in 1994. And then in uh, the early 2000s, uh, or maybe late 90s, it was uh, opened to be really precise for uh, uh, anybody's use. Before that, they kept it like, if you used GPS, it gave you an area within like 200 yards or two miles or something. I, I don't remember what it was, but it, it wouldn't allow you to be precise for civilian everyday average use because uh, they didn't want people to use it for missile guidance systems. But then I guess they decided what the heck if people want to be able to do that. They, the people who would want to do that can already do it. So let's just make it really precise for everybody. So in the late 90s, or early 2000s, they uh, opened it up where everybody uh, could do it. There have been some other uh, attempts by other companies or other countries, the European Union, right? Uh, China, India have attempted to create their own GPS systems, but what, why create another one when we already got one that works really well? So America is the one that created it. Russia tried to create one called the Global Navigation System Satellite, or, or I just love this acronym, GLOWINASS, GLOWINASS. This is the GLOWINASS, the glowing ass uh, G location navigation system. <laughs> I think that's funny. All right, so let's look at a few of the applications on the civilian side. I think it's uh, some neat stuff to point out. Uh, astronomy, automated vehicles, right? Driving tractors, you know, uh, using our cell phones to do maps or cars that could drive themselves like the Google driverless car. They're all using this technology. Uh, cartography, so uh, making maps. Cellular telephone, telephony, telephony, whatever that word is. Yeah, uh, so cell phones all have GPS uh, locations in them. And, uh, you know, and it says here in 2002, uh, emergency, wait, the Federal Communications Commission mandated, mandated the feature in either the handset or in the towers for triangulation in 2002. So in 2002, it became mandated that if you have a cell phone, uh, you know, uh, emergency services, emergency services will be able to know exactly where you are. Basically what that says is, you know, anybody with access can know where you are if you have your cell phone with you. And uh, third party developers later gained access to the GPS APIs, right, which allowed them to start, whoops, which allowed them to start developing, uh, you know, applications like Google Maps and things like that, where we could see where we are as we drive. Uh, clock synchronization, so you could get a GPS atomic clock, which, you know, is accurate to 10, I guess, nanoseconds, is that what that is? Disaster relief emergency services depend upon GPS for location and timing capabilities. Tracking fleets, you know, so uh, shipping containers or, you know, even shipping inventory or pallets or crates or trucks or cars. 
you know, so, uh, so a lot of employees don't know this. They'll go to work for a company and the company is tracking the vehicle that the employee uses to run their business during the day. And sometimes uh, the way p employees learn about it is they're like, so I noticed the, the boss will be like, so I noticed from 12 to 2 every day you stop at this house. Who lives there? Oh, that's my girlfriend. <laughs> so from 12 to 2, you're not working, huh? All right. So they could they could know where you're going. It's kind of a crazy world. Geo geofencing. Geofencing is another interesting application. You know, the, the vehicle tracking systems, right? So again, being able to track vehicles. Um, but you can also do fencing like where if the vehicle goes beyond a certain point, you have technology connected to the GPS system, which just kills the, the, the car. So the car is no longer able to go. Uh, uh, you, OnStar. OnStar is a really common G vehicle tracking system. It doesn't have the you know, thing where if you go past a certain point, it'll shut your car down. Though the OnStar people can shut your car down remotely, which is interesting. People tracking systems. So, uh, you know, prisoners wearing ankle bracelets or, you know, you just want to know what your kid is doing. Pet tracking systems, right? Put a little device on your dog and now you'll always know where your dog is. And you can log in to just be like, oh, there's my dog and go get your dog if you got a dog that runs all the time. Those are still, uh, uh, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Um, and the entire thing about backpacking, I should be the backpacking GPS devices already. Geotagging. Uh, applying location coordinates to digital objects such as photographs. So, you know, uh, geotagging is uh, if you see like uh, maps, let's just go to maps and uh, Google Maps and let's search for Hawaii. Let's search for uh, uh, Honolulu. There we go. And uh, then I could go here and I could say, hey, show me photos. Right. And so these photos were all taken and the camera had a GPS uh, thing in it. And so when you people uploaded these, these photos to the web, then, you know, if they uh, didn't make them private, then, uh, or however they, they gained access, maybe they allowed the access, I don't know. Depends upon where they uploaded it, I'm sure. But anyhow, the photo also has with it GPS data, so then Google can say, okay, these photos were taken in these locations, and you could just keep zooming in, man. You could just keep zooming in and seeing photos that people have taken of, uh, of these various locations. Pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. I want to live in Hawaii. Yeah, I want to live in Hawaii. All right. So that's a uh, that's a uh, what, what was that? That was a uh, geo 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 tagging, applying location coordinates to objects. Uh, GPS aircraft tracking. GPS for mining. Right. Allows you to really accurately drill into certain areas. GPS tours, where you have something that knows where you are and it starts pointing out. Uh, uh, um, you know, points of interest, points out points of interest, navigating, uh, phaser measurement. I don't know what that is. Uh, recreation, um, geocaching is kind of interesting. Robotics, surveying, tectonics, telematics, whatever, all these different applications. Geocaching is the one I want to show you, which is kind of interesting. So you, geocaching is a real world treasure hunt that's happening right now all around you. There are 2.2 million active geocaches and 6 million geocachers worldwide. And so you could uh, get your little cell phone, you could put in uh, a location, and uh, then you could find geocaches around uh, where you are, and uh, you could, you know, go find things that maybe somebody hid something behind a tree up in the mountains, and um, yeah, you could go find these locations, and yeah, it's kind of cool. Nike has a uh, Nike Plus Sport Watch with GPS, or your iPhone can have this app, Nike Plus app. And uh, you could do things like here's the stuff about GPS. It'll track where you ran, how fast you ran, how far you ran, and then it'll keep track of all that data online. So as you're running over months, years, location, right, uh, all kinds of different stuff. So it'll really be able to keep track of all your athletic data if you're a runner. It's really uh, applicable for runners. And uh, and then you'll be able to log in, see graphs and charts about you know how are you improving or not improving and that kind of thing. So what is Nike? Uh, well, you could you could go to Nike Plus. What is Nike Plus or Nike GPS and probably watch videos about it on YouTube. One last thing I want to point out about GPS are just some of the GPS devices that are out there. I'm not sure if I mentioned these already or not, but I wanted to make sure that they were covered. Uh, so OnStar, here's OnStar, right? It knows where your car is. Uh, it helps you get help if you need it. LoJack can track. LoJack can track uh, different things also. So 
you know, not really all that different than our OnStar, except for OnStar is kind of like, I'm in my car and I need help, push the button. LoJack is like, I don't know where my car is. Somebody took it and they could help you find your car or your laptop or whatever you want to uh, attach LoJack to. There's also pet tracking. So you could come on to uh, Google and search for pet tracking. And they have all kinds of GPS enabled devices for tracking your pet. Uh, where's the one that I was just seeing a moment ago? There's this one that I see quite a bit right here, tag, T-A-G-G. -G. And then there's uh, child tracking. So you want to keep track of where your kid is. So you could uh, do child tracking. There's probably, yeah, here we go, eight apps and gadgets to keep track of your child. So you could just install it on their cell phone. And, uh, you know, they might not even know that it's there. And you could know where they are, which, of course, might also be useful if you're concerned about whether or not you're... Uh, <laughs> Your significant others going places they might not you you might not want them to be gone. <laughs> so you could catch your cheating spouse if you search for track my spouse. There's also ways you could do that. It's kind of funny, and uh, you could see uh, where your friends are. They have apps for like using your phone, right? It broadcasts your location, and all your friends broadcast their location. And you can just look at your phone and see where your friends are. That's kind of an interesting deal. And finally, you could get navigation systems which you could connect to boats or tractors or whatever the heck you want. You could create your own device and uh, and it will navigate that device for you, right? You just kind of put in the coordinates and the, the GPS thing does all the navigation. Of course, you got to have a little engineering sophistication connected to whatever device you're connecting it to, but, you know, kind of cool. So that's a little bit about GPS and how GPS works and, uh, you know, some of the applications of GPS. Um, 27 satellites, 12,000 miles up in the sky, and uh, you need four to calculate your location. And uh, it does that by sending down the signal of the exact time when the signal left the satellite and the exact time when the signal arrived. And they know how fast the signal is traveling, so they know the distance to travel. And once you uh, get that data, you could use geometry to calculate the location by, uh, through triangulation. So that's, uh, that's GPS.